The best longevity diet isn't keto or vegan or carnivore or Mediterranean. And as we go through the research in this video, see if you can figure out the best longevity diet, and I'll reveal it at the end. A top priority in selecting a diet is making sure that that diet helps to control our weight. Obesity rates are skyrocketing. Over 42% of us are now obese. This is bad for diabetes, blood pressure, arthritis, so I see a truckload of patients in the clinic with severe back pain, cancer, sleep apnea, and fatty liver. The goal of a great diet is to prevent, treat, or reverse the complications of obesity and improve the quality of life. So which diet is best for weight loss? Well, one of the most famous reviews of the diet literature was published in 2014. It combined over 48 unique randomized controlled trials that looked at a variety of different diets and included a total of over 7,000 individuals. After a 12-month period, significant weight loss was observed with any low-carbohydrate or low-fat diet, and the differences between the different diets were small. This supports the practice of recommending a diet that a patient will adhere to in order to lose weight. But that was 2014. What has happened since then? Another analysis was done in 2016 that also found that a variety of different diets can help with weight loss. But the 2014 and 2016 analyses pale in comparison to the one that was published in the British Medical Journal in 2020. This one involved over 121 randomized controlled trials involving just under 22,000 people. The individual trials tested 14 different diets. And once again, at the 12-month period, the weight loss effects were broadly the same. Over and over again, the studies show the same thing. People can lose weight over the short term, but it's incredibly difficult to keep that weight off over the long term. So why does this happen and what can be done about it? Well, one of the most famous diet researchers, Professor Kevin Hall, wanted to answer this in 2018. In a shocking statistic, more than half of the lost weight is regained within two years, and by five years, more than 80% of the lost weight is regained. Unfortunately, it appears that the body fights this weight loss. So in recent years, there's been a re-emergence of low-carbohydrate diets to help fight this weight regain. It centers around a concept called the carbohydrate insulin model of obesity, which posits that diets high in carbohydrates are particularly fattening because they increase the secretion of insulin and thereby drive fat accumulation. Unfortunately though, multiple randomized controlled trials have been done, which were included in the meta-analyses that we went through in this video, and overall it shows that the carbohydrate insulin model of obesity has failed experimental interrogation. So overall, what diet is best to help us stay at a healthy weight and fight the weight regain? Well, there's no one-size-fits-all diet for weight loss, but there are some critical fundamentals that we're going to build upon when designing the perfect longevity diet. We know that we need to reduce refined carbs and sugar. I don't need to tell you that we need to cut down on chips, biscuits, and cupcakes. We want to replace fizzy drinks and juices, including fruit juice, with water. We want to prioritize whole foods, including non-starchy vegetables, for the fiber content. And if someone wants to consume whole grains like I do, we need to make sure that they are truly whole grains, not refined and not mixed in with sugar. We want to eat a small, early dinner and then immediately brush our teeth. That's an incredibly powerful signal that eating has finished for the day. But most of us already know all of that. Instead, what most people don't know is how we can use protein to help keep the weight off. In a randomized controlled trial of 773 participants, the group that was on the high-protein diet had less weight regain compared to those in a low-protein diet. And a high-protein intake is not just for weight control. A 2020 meta-analysis published in the British Medical Journal showed that higher protein intakes are associated with lower all-cause death rates. That effect is probably to do with muscle mass. A growing body of evidence suggests that higher muscle strength is associated with lower all-cause death rates. We want to maximize our muscle strength in youth, maintain that muscle strength in adult life, and minimize the loss in older life. And high protein diets mixed in with resistance exercise can help us do that. Specifically from a 2018 meta-analysis, the magic number that we're after is 1.6 grams of lean protein intake per kilogram of body weight per day. That amount of protein appears to maximize the benefits of exercise. Now it used to be thought that we had to have hits of protein intake, as in we had to have multiple meals of protein spaced throughout the day. And while that strategy may offer a small additional benefit, most of the benefit comes from total daily protein intake. 
as per an important study that was published this year 2024. But before considering high protein intake for the optimal longevity diet, we need to have a look at the other side. Because some longevity scientists, such as Professor Walter Longo, suggest that we should be lowering our protein intakes, referencing studies such as this one from 2014. This study tested 25 different diets on mice, and it found that the diet that had the lowest protein intake was associated with the longest lifespan. But it's important to remember that our lives are vastly different to those of lab mice. We need to optimize for resiliency. In the real world, we're exposed to viruses, bacteria, pollution, attacks on our immune system. And it's a classic case that we need to put far more attention on the human clinical research rather than what happens in lab animals. To wrap up the high protein section of this video, what types of proteins are best? Well, when selecting protein sources, an important factor to consider is their leucine content. Leucine is an essential amino acid and it plays a pivotal role in initiating muscle protein synthesis. Animal-based proteins are typically rich in leucine, so for those following a plant-based diet, achieving the same amount of leucine intake requires a higher overall protein consumption. And there are fantastic plant-based protein sources that you can consider, for example chickpeas, lentils and pea protein powder. Soy protein is another option and despite all of the noise on social media, we've got fantastic human research showing that soy protein has no effect on testosterone levels or estrogen in men. Speaking of social media, you may hear some people talking about the concerns of high protein intakes and kidney health. Multiple human studies have looked at this, and overall there's a lack of scientific evidence linking higher protein intakes to adverse outcomes. So in addition to the longevity diet fundamentals that we've already gone through, we should add high lean protein intake to that list. But why do I mention lean protein? And this leads us nicely into talking about different types of dietary fats. We've got fantastic evidence from Cochrane that cutting down on saturated fat intake leads to a 17% reduction in the risk of heart disease. Saturated fat is typically from animal sources, but it's important to remember that unsaturated fats can be brilliant for us. In 2022, a study called the Cordioprev study was conducted, and it compared the Mediterranean diet, which is rich in unsaturated fats, to a low-fat diet. Over 1,000 patients were included, and they were followed up for 7 years. The study found that for secondary prevention, the Mediterranean diet was superior to the low-fat diet in preventing major cardiovascular events. So unsaturated fats can be brilliant for us. This includes things like avocados, nuts, seeds, extra virgin olive oil, and certain types of fish. So we'll add to our list that we should replace saturated fat with unsaturated fat. Next is salt intake, specifically sodium. We've got great evidence showing that as sodium intake increases, so too does our blood pressure. Not what we want. It puts needless strain on our blood vessels and contributes to heart attacks and strokes. And about 80% of the sodium intake in the United States comes from restaurant and packaged foods. And while many people enjoy the taste of salt, the taste of salt is malleable, meaning that if you cut out salt from your diet, your food may taste a bit bland for 4-6 to six weeks, but if you get through that, the taste buds adjust and your flavour comes back. So we'll add low sodium intake to our list. And the final concept I want to discuss, which I've briefly touched on earlier in the video, is fruit and vegetable intake. Fruits and vegetables are rich in potassium, and potassium helps to lower our blood pressure. Fruits and vegetables are also rich in fiber. Fiber helps us to feel fuller for longer. So what's the best longevity diet to help you live a healthy 90 plus years? The best longevity diet is the diet that you can stick to over the long term. One that makes you feel energized and decreases your cancer risk and heart disease risk factors. When selecting and designing a diet, there are some fundamentals that we should try and stick to. We want to reduce refined carbs and sugar. Replace fizzy drinks and juices, including fruit juice, with water. We want to prioritize whole foods, and if you do consume whole grains, make sure that they're whole and not mixed in with sugar. Have a small, early dinner and then immediately brush your teeth. We want to prioritize a high, lean protein intake, aiming for 1.6 grams of protein intake per kilogram of body weight per day. We want to replace saturated fats with unsaturated fats, such as avocados, nuts, seeds, extra virgin olive oil, and some types of fish. We want to reduce salt intake, and as part of that, avoid processed foods and watch out for sources, because often, sources are packed with salt. Finally, 
Non-starchy vegetables and fruits are fantastic for potassium and fiber intake. In addition to those diet fundamentals, I also take microvitamin to help me reach the recommended daily intakes of vitamins and minerals without the risk of mega dosing. But remember that just because I take a supplement does not in any way mean that you should as well. And make sure to check out this next video here about all of the strategies available to us today to significantly reduce our risk of heart attacks. And a massive thank you to all of the patrons supporting the channel.